Hello and welcome to Shredder Zoo. Australia is full of strange and deadly creatures and it was no different in prehistoric times. Today we are taking a look at a particularly strange and incredibly deadly creature that lived in Australia from around 2 million to 46,000 years ago during the late Pliocene to the late Pleistocene. This is the Thylacolea, also known as the marsupial lion. As its name suggests, it was a marsupial which means that young were passed into an external pouch at a very early stage of their development. Development would continue inside the pouch until the young were ready to walk about for themselves. However, the other part of its name is a bit misleading, as Thylacolea was not related to existing lions today. In fact, it was much closer related to koalas and wombats. The marsupial lion is the largest meat-eating mammal known to have ever existed in Australia and one of the largest marsupial carnivores from anywhere in the world. Individuals ranged up to around 75 centimetres high at the shoulder and about 150 centimetres from head to tail. They would have been much smaller than they are depicted here in Ark. Measurements taken from a number of specimens show they averaged around 100 to 130 kilos, that's around 220 to 290 pounds, although individuals heavier than 160 kilos might not have been uncommon. Fully grown, Thylacolea would have been close to the same size as a modern jaguar. Despite its carnivorous nature, it is thought that it evolved from a herbivore. This could be the reason for the Thylacolea's unique teeth. Carnivores usually have enlarged, sharp canine teeth. That's the pointed teeth either side of the front or incisor teeth. This can be seen taken to the extreme by the saber-toothed cat. But Thylacolea had short, stubby canine teeth that were not very sharp and they served very little purpose. But what it did have was large rodent-like incisor teeth. Even more fearsome were the hyper-specialised carnosal teeth. Carnosals are paired upper and lower teeth, either molars or premolars and molars, modified in such a way as to allow enlarged and often self-sharpening edges to pass by each other in a shearing manner. These teeth were taken to the extremes in the thylacoleo. The premolars essentially became laterally compressed blades, more high ridged and pointed at the front, yet still sharp all the way down their length. The dentation of the thylacolea is so unlike anything alive today, it confused paleontologists. Some thought it was a herbivore, using these unusual teeth to slice into tough vegetation, or maybe nuts and fruits. But the lack of any grinding teeth suggests that plant matter was not a part of this animal's diet. Instead, the large cheek teeth were used for slicing flesh and bone. Another surprising feature of the jaws of the Thylacoleo was just how strong they were. The Thylacoleo, a predator that was less than 4 feet long and probably weighed only 220 pounds, had the bite force equivalent to a modern lion twice its size. Pound for pound, the Thylacoleo had the strongest bite of any mammal species, living or extinct. But how could it have such a strong bite? The answer might have to do with the brain and skull differences between marsupials and placental mammals. Many carnivores have a relatively large brain size in comparison with marsupials, lessening the amount of bone they can devote to massive muscle attachments to enhance bite force. Thylacoleo, by contrast, seems to have had stronger muscle attachments and a smaller brain, and its skull superficially resembles that of a big cat. There are other similarities with modern big cats, indicating that the Thylacoleo inhabited a similar ecological niche. It had retractable cat-like claws. Because the claws were retracted when not being used, they'd be kept free from contact with the ground so that they did not become blunt. The Thylacoleo could also climb very well. Scientists have looked at the elbow joints of a large number of living mammals. This showed a strong association between the anatomy of the humerus, that's the upper arm bone, where it articulates with the forelimb and the locomotor behaviour of mammals. Animals more specialised for running, like a dog, have a joint indicating movement limited for back and forwards, stabilising their bodies on the ground, while animals more specialised for climbing, like a monkey, have a joint that allows for rotation of the hand around the elbow. Modern cats, which unlike dogs, use their forelimbs to grapple with their prey, have an elbow joint of intermediate shape. 
But surprisingly, the thylacoleo has a unique elbow joint among living predatory mammals, one that suggests a great deal of rotational capacity of the hand, like a tree-dwelling mammal, but also features not seen in living climbers that would have stabilised the limb on the ground, suggesting that the thylacoleo was equally comfortable in the trees or on the ground. It also had a semi-opposable thumb, which could be used to grip trees while climbing, or also in grappling with its prey. It has been speculated that the thylacoleo used this thumb, which also had a very large claw on it, to disembowel its prey, rather than killing with its bite. Further evidence for its climbing ability was discovered during a study of the main cavern of Tight Entrance Cave, located in southwestern Australia. In this cave, there are many scratch marks left on the walls. These scratch marks were left by the claws of the thylacoleo. The majority of these marks were clustered on a near vertical rock face that led up towards an exit to the surface. That exit may be blocked today, but clearly this way out of the cave was the preferred route for many marsupial lions, rather than using a longer path with a lesser gradient. This suggests that these animals were confident and assured climbers and remarkably agile. In addition, the study indicates that the scratches were mostly made by juveniles. This suggests that Thylacoleo may have reared their young inside caves. In fact, many remains have been found inside caves. But also found in a cave in 2008 was rock art depicting what is thought to be a Thylacoleo. This was discovered on the northwestern coast of Australia. The image contains details that would otherwise have remained only conjecture. The tail is depicted with a tuft tip, it has a pointed ears rather than rounded, and the coat is striped. The prominence of the eye, a feature rarely shown in other animal images of the region, raises the possibility that the creature may have been a nocturnal hunter. In 2009, a second image was found that depicts a thylacoleo interacting with a hunter who is in the act of spearing or fending the animal off with a multiple barbed spear. This could mean that it is possible the thylacoleo went extinct more recently than previously thought. It is believed that, as with many animals I've covered in this series, human beings were at least partially responsible for the extinction of the thylacoleo. It was especially adapted for hunting large animals, but it was not particularly suited to catching smaller prey. The relatively quick reduction in numbers of its primary food source around 40,000 to 50,000 years ago probably led to the decline and eventual extinction of the marsupial lion. The arrival of humans in Australia and the use of fire stick farming probably sped up the decline of the thylacoleus prey species and in turn led to the extinction of this fascinating creature. Well that's all for today and as always I hope you've enjoyed this video and you've learned something new. If you did enjoy it then please let me know by leaving a like and a comment. You can also follow me on Twitter and become a Patreon. All the links will be in the description of this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe so you can see more videos like this one. And I'll see you next time here at Shredder Zoo. Goodbye.